Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you why I chose Reaper as my DAW. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you everything Reaper can do. There's way too many things to show you, and you can check out my series called This is Reaper 6 to see all that. I won't throw the other videos on the video page on the Reaper website. Right here. Instead, I want to focus on just the things that Reaper does that makes it special. It could be a feature that only Reaper has, or just a feature that I feel Reaper really excels at. So let's take a look. The first thing we'll notice is that Reaper has no copy protection or dongle required to use it. We could just download and start using it immediately. No questions asked. And you could use it on any and all of the computers you have, not just one. We get 60 days to try it out with full functionality and no strings attached. And although we should pay for a license after those 60 days, Reaper doesn't stop us from using it. It will still continue to function exactly the same way, which is great if you forget to bring it to a friend's house or to the studio. You can just download it from there and be up and running in minutes. Which brings up my next point Reaper is a tiny download. The version I use on Mac is only 19.6 megabytes. You heard that right, megabytes, not gigabytes. So it's incredibly small and super efficient. So we can open a full mix in seconds, quit, and open it back up in no time at all. Unheard of compared to most DAWs. Another thing I love about it is the portable install feature, which means you can create an install that is completely self-contained. Instead of putting all the files that go with the program all over our computer, everything can be contained in one folder, making it easy to take it with us on a USB flash drive and have all of our custom settings go with it. And not only that, we could have multiple portable installs on one computer. So you can have completely different settings depending on what we're doing. For example, I have a portable install for working with video, another one for recording large bands, another one for editing voiceover, and another one just for mixing. With all the customization and workflow that makes sense for those types of projects. And I can even keep many of them open at the same time. Next, we have customization. Just about everything in Reaper can be customized. We can use different themes, for example, either from Reaper or created by users. And we have a theme adjuster, which allows us to tweak the Reaper 6 theme to work or look like we prefer. We can adjust pages and pages of preferences. All the menus can be changed. We have mouse modifiers, which decide what happens when we use the mouse in different contexts. And we could also change the toolbars and the toolbar buttons completely. Even create custom toolbars and custom toolbar buttons. Then we have actions, which control just about everything in Reaper. Everything we want to do stems from this list of actions. And they could all be changed. So they can have completely different keyboard shortcuts to trigger them. Along with the ability to create custom actions which are multiple actions or macros which can be performed all at once using just one keyboard shortcut. Incredibly powerful. Then we have effects chains. Effects chains are basically a group of effects and their settings that can be saved to be used in any project on any tracks we want. Just save them and recall them at will. And we can assign keyboard shortcuts to load effects chains as well. We can also freeze tracks, which is the process of saving all the DSP power that is being used by our track effects and rendering it to an audio file. So your slower computer can run a lot faster with the important ability to unfreeze that track if you want to go back and tweak those effects parameters. And besides putting effects on tracks, we could also put them on media items. So each of our audio files on this track, for example, can have completely different effects. There's also only one track type. So there's no need to define a video track 
or a stereo or mono audio track, or an aux or bus track, or even a MIDI or instrument track. Any track can contain any and all of those things at the same time. There's also no tools to worry about in Reaper. No need to constantly switch to a different tool to do a different thing. Everything is based on where you place the mouse. So you could trim on this side or this side, create fades up here or over here, adjust the volume over here, or just move the item around by simply grabbing it, all without a single modifier. And if we add in modifiers, we can do so much more, like this, or this. We also have pre-fader envelopes in Reaper. So besides being able to automate the volume of our tracks in our mix, we also have an extra envelope just for adjusting things pre-fader, which is very important for working with things like vocals. We want to readjust levels before it hits a compressor or any dynamic plugins. Helpful for fixing P-pops and DSing as well. And we can see the result of this envelope in real time, right in the waveform. We could also save and use track templates. So everything we have set up on a track or a group of tracks can be saved completely and imported into a new project with ease. No need to start over each time. And everything is saved and recalled perfectly, even the media if we want. We could also copy tracks from project to project very easily. Just open both projects in different tabs and copy a track or tracks from the first project and simply paste them into the second one. It's that simple. No messing with an import tracks dialog. And we could create and use track folders, which is essentially like creating a bus, which automatically routes the signal from the child tracks to the parent tracks, but also allows us to hide and show the child tracks when needed keeping our projects a bit neater. We could also sweep the mute, solo, and record buttons so we can quickly perform those functions on multiple tracks that are right next to each other. A great time saver when mixing. And we could also create and use temporary groups. While Reaper already has an extensive track grouping feature, we can simply select multiple tracks and they'll behave as a group as long as they're selected. And we can bypass that group behavior at any point using the shift key. And we can quickly arrange our songs using the regions function. As opposed to markers, which label a certain point, regions define a section. But more importantly, we can completely arrange our song as when we move or duplicate these regions, the media goes with it. Another great time saver for trying out arrangements on the fly. Automation items is also a powerful new feature in Reaper. Not only can we automate our tracks with envelopes, but the automation itself can be an item, making it much easier to move throughout the song. We can also pull these items so that adjusting one of them adjusts them all. And we can create LFO shapes that make interesting automating effects using the automation item. We can now embed our effects in our tracks, either in the track control panel or the mixer. So there's no need to open our track effects to adjust. They can be adjusted right from here. Now, besides including just about every effects plugin we could want, including EQ, gate, compression, reverb, and delay, Reaper comes with a powerful step sequencer called Mega Baby, which looks like this. And from here, we can just click in the boxes to create interesting drum parts, bass lines, and synth arpeggios without even having to know how to play a MIDI keyboard. It's fun and very inspirational as it's very easy to click the wrong box, but love that mistake. To get around our project, we can use screen sets which allows us to quickly switch from one view to another 
with just a quick touch of a keyboard shortcut. We could also create sub-projects, which are basically projects within projects. So if we want to work with items that represent full projects that we don't need open at the time for something like a mastering session or the music for a film or movie or commercial or video game, we can create a sub-project for that piece and only dig in deeper if we need to tweak it further. Incredibly powerful for managing large multi-projects. And finally, we could use the render queue, which is useful when you have many different versions of a mix. You need to render, but you don't want to render them now. We can add all the versions to the queue and render them later. Another great time saver. So obviously, this isn't everything that Reaper can do, but it's the unique features where I think Reaper really shines when compared to similar programs or other DAWs. So that's why I chose Reaper as my DAW. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!